the 20th century is reaching its close. We attempted to determine the phenomena characteristic of this historical era. Sport would most certainly occupy a special place. Sporting events have become the most significant festivity of the contemporary world and the Olympic idea its humanistic gospel. The calendar of leading sporting events has assumed the role of religious calendars and become spiritual mainstay and the stadium the most important cult place of the contemporary world. The development of capitalism led to utter trivialization of the Olympic mystery. What took place is precisely what Coubertin was confronted with from the very inception of the Olympic Games. Instead of a church, the Olympic Games became a circus. Instead of being honorable guardians of the original spirit of the Olympiad, the gentlemen of the International Olympic Committee became unscrupulous Olympic Games dealers. Coubertin's Olympic idea was sacrifice to the god of money. The Negroes became attractive power in the development of sports show business and an instrument for reaching strategic objectives of new world order. This was well perceived by legendary champion of Afro-Americans human rights, Martin Luther King. He dubbed black stars of US sports black gladiators of the 20th century who were a disgrace for the black race as their white masters were using them for covering up the miserable position of the black population in the United States and for depoliticizing it. It is better for the Negroes to exterminate one another in arenas than to fight for their rights in the street, is the motto a New York police chief was guided by at the beginning of the 20th century when he spoke in favor of opening boxer halls in the Negro ghettos of New York. Martin Luther King knew that sport was not leading the Negroes to a promised land. Black Africa, in which tens of millions of children die of hunger and sickness, has become the chief reservation from which American and European clubs are recruiting Olympic slaves. Every year, tens of thousands of young Africans vanish in the increasingly deep swamp of world sports, which has become one of the extermination sites for the poor in the world. Not only is sport a form of dehumanization, but also a transparent form of denaturalization of man. It became a death industry, and as such it mirrors the prevailing tendency of the world's development.
The ever-widening gap between men's biological potentials and the requests posed by capitalist progress has become the generator of an increasingly monstrous destruction of the body and mind. Athletes become contemporary Frankensteins. Sport is a symbolic indication of the end of the epoch based on the social Darwinian doctrine and the absolutized principle of performance. The principle of competition has become one of dominance, while the principle of progress has become one of destruction. It is not the visionary spirit, but rather one of apocalypse that dominates sports grounds. The audience is like the smell of blood, is the golden rule on which the world sports industry rests and which represents one of the mainstays of Western democracy. Just as in ancient Rome, experiencing its fall in increasingly large portions of blood in the Colosseum were substitute for increasingly small portions of bread, currently increasingly large portions of blood on sports grounds are man's compensation for his increasingly uncertain and bloody life. Stadiums have become modern concentration camps in which the freedom-loving dignity of young people is crushed and hordes of barbarians created. Sport is the most efficient way of drawing men into a more horrid maelstrom of destructive mindlessness, tantamount to self-destructive frenzy of ancient policies which brought about the collapse of the Hellenic world. Sport has evolved from an ideology of emerging and developing capitalist society to an ideology of capitalist society in decline whose accumulated destructive power threatens to crush humankind.